Okay, my name is Brian Holt. I used to work here with, with Russell at KSL. In fact, I can go to that slide. This is called Let Grunt.js Tell Your Code Sucks. I'm Brian Holt. That is my SNU. Um, that's the name of the Reddit alien, in case you didn't know that. His name is SNU. Um, How's that spelled? S-N-O-O. -O. So when they were developing Reddit, um, they had a bunch of different ideas for names, and one of them wha is What's SNU? Kind of like What's New, right? Um, but that, that didn't stu stick because it's an awful name. <laughs> so they went with Reddit, but they left him named SNU. It's kind of an <laughs> homage to that. Nice. Um, college dropout, I, I worked at Newskin, which was awful. I've also worked at Zango, which was awful. They're good companies, I just didn't have good experiences. <laughs> if you like multi-level marketing, which I don't. Um, I, I was a junior PHP developer at KSL with Russell. He taught me everything I know about like Git and stuff like that, which is actually true. He taught me everything <laughs> I know about Git. So if I have bad Git skills, it's his fault. <laughs> um, I was a senior front end developer at Needle, which is down in Bluffdale. And then in August, I was hired by Reddit. I am the director. Oh, I, I did Null to Node, if anyone heard of that. Posted it on the Salt Lake City subreddit. Just a free Node class. Um, I'm teaching an upcoming Angular masterclass, if anyone wants to go to that. And I am presently the, the director of front end development for Reddit on the Reddit GIFs part of stuff. Okay, what is Grunt? Anyone here like just like, what the hell is Grunt? Why am I here? Okay, um, cool, we'll go over it. I'm gonna go through these really fast. Grunt is a task runner, so if you're familiar with Make or Jake or Rake or any of those aches, um, it does very similar things to that. It'll run tasks for you like hinting, linting, um, compilations, um, any sort of things, and it's all written in on JavaScript on top of Node. It's very easy and it's quite painless. So, cool story, why do I care? Um, it's it's an easy way to enforce good coding standards. It, um, it'll do things like it will do pre-commit hooks, so it will actually force your developers to pass all the linting and unit testing before they commit. A plus, no one can write bad code. Um, does live reload for you? It's a big plus. Like so, you don't have to run like Code Kit or anything like that. It's just built in. Tons and tons and tons of plugins have exist for it. I've already written a couple myself. Um, the plugins aren't particularly easy to write, but um, there's just tons of them available. And yeah, features like live reload and watching for changes in your file system are just trivial to set up. So the biggest wins, the worst unit tests are, are the ones that are never run because you don't have any confidence in them after a while and you spend all this time writing them and then you never use them. So um, unit tests are only as useful as you use them. So having something like Grunt, where it, like if you save a file and it, it'll just automatically run your t your unit testing for you, makes it super easy. Um, it makes stuff like Less and SAS easy to introduce to your ecosystem because again, it'll watch for them and just compile them out on the fly. And then you can install all this stuff as Git prehooks, which is just awesome. So let's make our own Grunt project. Um, if you're going to try and follow along, I'm not going to show you to set up Node, so, um, but it's going to be built on top of Node. You can use npm to install Grunt. Um, npm is the package manager for Node. It's great when it's not down, <coughs> um, and it's, it's, it can consume your package.json, which is really nice as well, which is where you keep all your Node type things. Um, let's do this. So if you want to follow my code, don't have to. I'll be doing just along here, but the code for the, the actual project that I'll be working on is at grunt prez php on the, off my GitHub. Um, or if you want to see like the code for the, the actual presentation, just knock off the first part or the last part that PHP is so just grunt prez. Okay, questions so far? Uh, let's move this next to everything that's useful. Okay, so. This is like just like the bare bones grunt project. I'm gonna make this much bigger. We we good? Re legible everyone? Okay. So um, you're just gonna say like your module experts up there. It's just gonna be a function that runs, and then you have this grunt init where you're just gonna define all of your tasks, and then you're gonna just kind of bootstrap b beneath that all of your grunt tasks. It'll make sense as if we're going along. So. Sorry, my notes are now falling asleep. 
All right, so let's go to our terminal. Right here I have my PHP server. Right here I have my, um, this is Redis, because the um, project that, like the PH, little PHP thing I wrote runs on Redis. Okay, Red legible, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna have npm init. So this is gonna, you're gonna start building your package.json here. I'm just gonna use most of the defaults. We're gonna call this 0 0.1.0 point zero description. Awesome. Uh, entry point, we'll just say it's app.php. Test command, we're gonna say grunt test. Like th this stuff is all arbitrary. Like you can even just leave a blank, it doesn't matter. Get repository, keywords, don't care. Author, me. License, MIT. Um, and it's gonna ask you, is this okay? The answer is yes, it's okay. Um, not too important. The, only, the really only important thing here is you're just gonna need an NPM file because you're gonna save your dependencies here so that when your, your colleague goes to work on this, he can just say gr npm install and his grunt environment's gonna be just ready to go for him. Okay, so let's go to our code. Um, now we have um, a package.json file. It's a little big. Still re readable? Okay. Um, this is what it looks like. We're just gonna add one thing real quick. I'm gonna assume like you're doing this for your personal projects, not necessarily things you want to publish. So we're just gonna put, come on. Nothing spell, private, true. One of the things that's cool about Node is it's very easy to publish your packages to uh, NPM. One of the bad things about Node is it's very easy to pa publish your packages to NPM. If you have private true in there, you'll never publish your package. I heard of someone doing that and they had a bad day after they got fired. Okay, <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and do, so I'm gonna kinda go out of order here because I wanna make sure I do the things that you guys actually care about. Um, let's go ahead and do PHP linting. So I'm just gonna use like the PHP-L just to make sure that your code will actually run. <coughs> so we're gonna go here to our console and we're gonna say npm install dash dash save dev uh, what that means is like I'm gonna save this in automatically in my package.json and the dash dev part just means it's, it's, a, it's a developer dependency and not necessarily like a dependency to run like you don't need it in production right you just need it on your dev environment if you did dash dash save that means it's just it's like a dependency I need this to run in production it's like something like mustache right like you would need that in production okay so we're gonna do one called grunt dash php lint, okay? So npm's gonna do its thing, it's gonna go out and get it. All that stuff just got magically installed. Um, you'll notice here now I got this dev dependency for grunt php lint. So now we just need to like configure it, right? So it actually like works. So we're gonna come in here, um, make sure I'm doing this right, yes. Per, this one's like super simple. You're just going to do PHP lint and then you're just going to do, you're going <coughs> to, this app word, keyword that I'm using right here is, is actually not a keyword. It's just arbitrary, um, but you can have like different um, levels of defined of doing it. So if I wanted to do it just to my app, I would say app.php. But I could also have them like say like test and it would go to find all my test files. So if I'd run grunt php lint test, then it would go lint all my test files or I could do grunt php lint app and it would just go to, so you can kind of define it if you just want to do parts of it or you can just do all of it in one, that works as well. Okay, I'm gonna save that. We're gonna go back here and we're just gonna say grunt php, let's see, let's get all this crap out of here. php grunt php lint. Oh, you need grunt to run grunt. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just do npm install save dev grunt. Minor oversight. <coughs> okay. Oh, you also need to define the task. So this one's pretty easy too. <coughs> it is grunt dot load npm 
tasks. Um, and it's just, you just put the name of the package in there, right? PHP lint. So you're just letting Grunt know like this, this exists. A little bit of bootstrapping there. So let's try this again. Hooray! <laughs> Code demo not failed. Okay. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? And so like if I went into my like, let's just open this real quick. If I just put like a bunch of like crap in here, right? And saved it. Gun PHP lint, and it's gonna say this there's a parse error. I don't know if it, any of you are familiar with PHP lint. All it does is it just runs through your code and makes sure it'll, it'll actually execute, right? Like it'll actually parse out. Um, there's, there's better linting tools, as I'm sure, in PHP. It was just the easiest one for me to show you. <coughs> um, I suppose I should show you what the app this is running on. Let's just look at it. Do I have it? Yeah. It's just like a little like note-taking app. So it's like this is a note, right? You submit it, and it fails. Um, Message is hidden by filter. Well, this is not really the important part. Anyway, all, all I was doing was saving it out to Redis, right? OK. So we don't need that part. So let's go talk about unit testing. So this has uh, some unit tests associated with it. Um, let's go back to our grunt file. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to this, and we're going to say uh, npm install dash dash save dev um, grunt PHP unit. OK? S installs PHP unit for you. This, this is super easy. You're just going to come down here and say grunt dot load npm tasks grunt php unit okay and you're going to come up here and all you're going to do is say php unit right and you're going to tell it where your classes are so these configuration values that I'm getting I just got them out of the readme's right like it's it depends on how the plugin is constructed so you just have to look through the the documentation to figure out how they are constructed and this one, you just say, like, classes. You tell it where your unit tests are. And you're just going to say, you can put options with them as well, just kind of like parameters. In this t case, I like colors, so I say colors true. OK, now we have automated unit tests, right? Pretty awesome. So I'm just going to say grunt PHP unit. And it failed. I'm not sure why. Shouldn't fail. This is magical. Oh, yeah, you have no targets. That's exactly why it's not going to work. That should be it. I mean, it's there. Hmm. Grunt PHP unit classes dir test. Okay, let's just get. This is my cheater one. We're just going to go grab these two out of here. We're just going to copy and paste into here. <laughs> oh, awesome. And now we're mixing tabs and spaces. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. OK, cool. So I don't know what I did differently, which is really sad to say. Um, but I, I, now it's linting its tests, and I must have just had my like um, grunt file not compiling correctly. Anyway, essentially the same things, right? Any questions that make sense? 
Okay. Yeah. Cool. I just saw a bunch of gloss overlooked, so. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and like make a macro task now, right? So you can usually like you're, you're not going to want to just like lint and then you like you want to just do all of it at once, right? You want to do all of your PHP tasks all at once. You're going to say grunt dot register task and you're going to call it PHP just because you want you want to run all your PHP related tasks and then you're going to define you're just going to give it a list of tasks to run. So in this case, I'm going to run PHP lint and I'm going to run PHP unit. Okay. Save it, come back over here, and just say grunt PHP. So notice it did both right there in a row. Cool. We, we uh, together thus far, hopefully this seems like, oh, I could do that, not, oh, shit, I don't want to <laughs> do that anymore. <laughs> OK. So um, what, what time do I have to end? Anyone have any idea? Okay, I'm going to keep. What's that? 220. 2.20? Good. Yeah, we got all sorts of time. Okay, let's, let's talk about watch. So, um, any, uh, yeah, as, as you have questions or comments, please just. Are you going to show the git commit stuff? Yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, just don't teach him the dash n flag, because <laughs> that ignores all your tests. I shouldn't have said that out loud. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to say npm install dash dash save dev um, grunt dash contrib dash watch. Little namespace tip here. So if it has grunt dash contrib, that means it's maintained by the core team of grunt. Um, if it is just grunt dash something, it's some schmo like me, right? Okay, <laughs> so save that business. Thank you, MPM, for being up today. I was actually <laughs> worried about that. <laughs> I have. This week it was all down. <laughs> well, and you had issues with Composer, so I was not expecting Composer. I don't hear about that one going down very much. Well, it, that is great for the the PHP community. Gunt, contrib, watch. So that's like always the first thing you want to do is just throw in the, the load npm task. I always forget. Okay, um, so you're going to do watch. Another pro tip here. Notice how like PHP lint is just called the same thing as PHP lint up here, um, PHP unit. Don't include the contrib, because the contrib is also implied. So what is watch? Watch is just going to, you're going to tell grunt to watch files. And after the files change, it just runs whatever tasks you define it. This is great for like less compilation, SAS compilation, linting, anything that you would want to be kind of reactive to, right? OK. So should be pretty easy to. Um, So um, I don't really know how to explain this too much because I don't understand super well. But it's always good not to name things the same things as each other in Grunt because you'll run into conflicts. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I just make sure I never call, like, for example, I'm not going to call this like the PHP unit watch because there's one called PHP unit. I'm not sure. I don't think that would actually conflict. But I'm not going to try. Just name things differently. It makes things a lot easier. OK, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tell what kind of files to watch. And since we're lazy programmers, we don't want to have to update this every time we create a new file. So guess what? There's built-in templating into Grunt. So you're just going to do something. I believe this is hand, no, this is underscore templating. OK, that's what the fancy looking tag is. And you're just going to say php lint dot app. OK? What this is essentially saying is like, I want you to go look at my PHP lint task, and I want you to pull out the app. So lo and behold, it's going up here to PHP lint, and it's going to the app. And it's just going to pull out whatever files are in there. And on PHP lint, could you do like a directory or something as well? Like yeah. testing, right? Like testing? Yeah, OK. Yeah. 
let's let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, so there's the testing one. There's just like the aster asterisk. That means it can have an arbitrary depth, right? So it's going to go recursively look in all of your folders for PHP ones inside the test directory, and then anything that has a PHP ending. Um, and you really could just have like asterisk asterisk slash asterisk dot PHP, and it would run it on literally every PHP file in your project. That works too. Make sense? Okay. Depends on how many files you have. Um, one thing always to be cautious of in Node is Node has um, a limit. Well, actually, it's OS X has a limit on how many files it can access at once. So, like, I was running uh, Python linting on our project for Reddit, and Reddit is very large. And so, we actually had to kind of structure it a different way. So, just be cautious. If you have more than, I think it's 256, be cautious of how many you're watching at once. Okay, uh, so but let's go ahead and watch both of these so you can d you know do it multiple times. And we're just going to do PHP lint dot testing as well. So we're going to lint both our tests and our uh, app. Okay. Um, then we're going to define tasks. So you're just going to tell it here um, what task you want to run every single time. So I'm going to put PHP unit in here. Something I've also found out is if you have large testing suites, large testing suites take time. Um, the one that I worked in my previous job, Needle, took several minutes to run. And you don't want that running every time you click save on. <laughs> so be cautious with that one. Linting is usually pretty cheap, but unit testing, is you usually just want to run, run it when you want to run it. Also, it yells at you as if you don't pass your test, so it gets annoying too. But then again, I guess you're saving it, so fix your code. That's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, <coughs> options. Um, this is where your live reload comes in. So every time that I change a PHP file, I want you to live reload my server. Sometimes live reload is faster than your web server. Um, you can give it delays. I don't remember how, but. Just be cautious of that when you're running it. Okay? So, I think this should be good to go. Hopefully nothing breaks. Okay, clear, clear. Grunt, watch. Okay, now we're waiting for PHP files to watch. It's just gonna hang here, like it's not doing anything, right? So, I'm gonna come over here. I got my app.php, save that. It doesn't work, okay. Watching, save, nothing. Okay, let's just make sure that our. That might be it. Okay, I must have messed up the templating. Anyway, oh, I think I know what to do with the templating. Let's look at this. Yeah, I do that every single time. Okay. So in order for the templating to work, you have to actually use the templating system. <laughs> so use percentage signs, clear, grunt, watch, okay, save. I don't know. Okay. Huh? You say to package file map app that PHP. Did I do that? Save app.php. That makes sense. Hey, <laughs> Mazel Tov. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, it's not quite idiot proof. <laughs> Pretty close, though. Okay. Good. We got time. So, library load. Um, let's just go ahead and. Um, so, you need a plugin. You either have to put like, a little snippet of JavaScript. That just lets it know, like it's it it's essentially establishes a web socket that waits for files to change, and then once the files change, it tells it to reload itself. So you can either put that on. I just there's a 
Chrome plugin, you just do that, and now it'll actually wait for changes, and then it will live reload. If you've ever used like live reload.app, or um, actually CodeKit doesn't use it, but live reload.app does use it. Same plugin. Cool. Um, questions, we good? Uh, let's, okay, we got 20 minutes, I think I can talk about both. Are we more set on learning Git hooks or like less compilation? Git hooks. Let's learn, let's do Git hooks. Unless there'll be a nice bonus if we get to that one. Okay, Git hooks, um, surprisingly easy actually. npm install dash dash save dev grunt git hooks okay anyone unfamiliar with git hooks anyway i'll just explain it super quick um, git provides with it when you do like version control type things like your commits there's a pre-commit there's a post commit there's like seven other different hooks that i don't know about um, Whenever you go to commit something, Git will fire off a, a pre-commit hook. It will check to see if it has any scripts to run, and then it will run those scripts, and if those scripts fail, then it will refuse to do the commit. Which is great, because we're just gonna plug Grunt into there, we're gonna plug our testing suite into it. So if you have you know, your crappy dev over here, or yourself, that's getting lazy, um, it will not let you commit code until you pass your tests. This is great if you have people that is like, I don't really need unit tests, I'm a good coder. This, this guy, like three years ago. Okay, <laughs> so let's go to our git file. Um, lazy copy and pasting here. And we're just gonna do git hooks. Okay, thank you. Probably wouldn't have found that very quickly. Um, okay, it's just going to be git hooks. You can like define fancy git hooks if you want to change them on some sort of rotating basis. That is much too complicated for me. So you can hook into multiple different kinds. The only one I've ever used is the pre-commit. I think that's one that's most commonly used. And right now all we, we're going to do is run our PHP stuff, right? We're just going to run that same PHP macro task that we defined previously. Okay. Voila, that's it. So all you need to do is you're just gonna say grunt git hooks. You just need to do it once. Um, you need to put commas in all the right places. Screw you, JSON, okay. Okay, <laughs> and now it is, it is defined as a, as a git hook. And each developer needs to do that on their machine. At least once. So if they run grunt install, would it do that? Or so you could, you could define a task that ran it for them. Um, you can also make it part of like the default task, which I'll show you in just a sec, like if you just try to type grunt. Um, however you, s you see best fit to do it is fine. There's no problem in resetting it every single time you do it, right? It's pretty fast. Okay, so let's just go make sure that I fail my thing real quick. I'm just gonna put some stuff right there. So now I should not pass off, so I say grunt PHP Lint, I'm not going to pass, right? So now that I don't pass, I'm going to try and. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and commit anyway because I'm a great developer. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Okay. Uh, the best <laughs> commit ever, okay? Won't let me commit. Hooray! <laughs> I, I tried to ruin the project and Grunt wouldn't let me. <laughs> there is a way to bypass it, don't do it. Okay. <laughs> Super simple, right? Super simple way just to force everyone to make sure that they're passing your, your, your coding standards before they can even commit to your tree. And for those worried about like emergency deployments, there is a flag, like I'll tell you, if you put dash n, it, w it will not fire any of the git hooks. Um, and so you can still have like emergency commits if you need to do that. Questions? Does this seem like useful to you? Yes. Does this seem approachable like you guys could do it in your own projects? Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, 
Let's not do that anymore. That's bad. I'm really sad. Like I, I spent all. I probably spent most of the time preparing just writing my little PHP app, and it doesn't <laughs> even work. I'm super <laughs> pissed about that. It's been so long since I've written. It's been since I worked at, worked at KSL since I've written PHP. So it was kind of a it was nostalgia. Okay, so let's. Yeah, I got time. I got plenty of time. Whew. Okay, who likes CSS preprocessors? Raise your hand. Yeah, extra stickers for all of you. <laughs> um, Grunt, this was my first time writing less, which felt a lot like writing SAS. So, holy crap. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I am not no longer the leading tower of dev. Okay. Okay. If anyone's not familiar, less is just um, it's a. I, yeah, I just wanted to try it. We use SAS at, uh, at Neil, uh, at Neil used them too, but at uh, Reddit. <coughs> but Reddit proper actually uses less. Anyway, so it's just like a language that you write that you can compile out, and it just compiles to CSS. There's a lot of very useful things like some functions and other neat things about it, and it has a lot of dependencies apparently. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so I wrote the. You want to see it? There's less right here, right? Which this actually looks entirely just like, but I imported Bootstrap, which is kind of cool. <coughs> okay. What's that? Just use SAS. It only has two One of which is less. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so. Just boilerplate that business in. Uh, what is it? Less. Okay. Just gonna do less. Gotta remember what the options are. So I showed this to a bunch of uh, Python developers, and they said, "No one cares about CSS preprocessing. Do it at the end." So that's what I did, because I guess no one cares but me. <laughs> okay. Um, Pretty easy here. So I'm going to show you that you can use like two different kinds of um, kind of like mini tasks inside of less. I'm sure there's some fancy name for them like micro tasks or subtasks. Subtasks, that's what they're called. Okay, so there's like a dev version and there's like a distribution version, right? When you're in developer mode, you want to have like the source maps, you want to have expanded output, you like you want to be able to see all of the use for debugging information. But when you're in production, you want to concat and minify and do all that fun sort of stuff. So we're going to do two different versions of, of this less compilation. Okay? So in dev, dev options clean CSS. I don't really remember what that was, but I apparently thought it was important enough to include. <coughs> and we have one called just like the files, right? Um, style that CSS. So, a couple ways to do it. You can do, um, have less just like compile out to, like if you have a file called like style.cs.less, it can compile to style.css. Imagine that's how most of you can do it. In this particular case, I'm just going to like explicitly define it. So, you, you put the target first and you put the, like what it's actually called, and it'll just compile across, right? Actually, that's why I really like the SAS one ver version better because, like, it also like will, it won't include uh, uh, prefix underscores, which is really nice because those are just meant to be. I'm talking about SAS. I'm sorry. That's like you get me excited about front end stuff, and I just talk all day. Okay. So, and then you, we're gonna have dist, and I don't really have anything special to put in dist for you guys, but just pretend like you know you wanted to do like all the compressed output and stuff like that. Um, this is where you would do it. So this is like the do the thing like before you deploy it out to your static, like all your static assets. Okay. Um, so let's just go ahead and go to our less. Um, let's change the background to be pink or something like that. Note body. Oh no, you won't even be able to see that. So let's. Um, okay, we'll just do body. Background color, 
red. Okay, so now oh, I, I'm not watching it, so I have to say grunt less dev, right? Because if I say grunt less, it's going to run every uh, subtask in there. But if I just want to run just that one, you're going to say less colon dev. Um, maybe not. Less task not found. Because I broke it. For the files, geez, I'm just the dangers of copying and pasting. Cool. So it just creates it for you. Pretty simple. Um, now, if we go over here, should be background of red. Now it's beautiful. <laughs> As you, now you know why our site is poor, so poorly designed. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool, right? This is a really good candidate for what you want to watch, right? So we're just going to say less compile. Um, and I'm going to show you a little trick that I found along the way. Any of you familiar with CSS injection? So essentially, it's going to watch for CS just CSS changes. And rather than refresh the entire page when you get new CSS, it's actually just going to inject it into your already going browser session. So if like you have some cool state you're in, like some menus open and you have to click a bunch of things to get there, it's gonna like refresh it just there, like that little piece of it. Instead of refreshing the whole page, you have to click through a bunch of stuff. Super nice, right? Making all the front end developers rejoice. Okay, files. This is actually in the Contrib Watch repository. Okay, so this is a grunt thing, the live reload group thing. The li this, it's from li actually live reload.js, an entirely right. separate library I'm sure. that watch wraps. Yeah, so what I'm asking is, I'm kind of following along and I'm using fast the fast one. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering, uh, that might be the live reload flag, I guess we're gonna, the what put here, is it gonna work on the fast one or is it for the Less contrib, or do I already get it as part of grunt with the contrib watch? You'll, you'll get it with the contrib watch. Okay. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's same thing. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Good question. Because SAS is better and you should use it. Okay. <laughs> um, there we go. So here I'm just going to stick the string because I'm lazy, and if there's ever any sort of less saved out, I, I just want to like run less. Easy. Um, tasks, like we're just going to run less. OK. And a couple ways to do this. You can actually put the options library reload here. It'll work just fine. Um, I found it to be useful um, to do, to actually watch the CSS files and change th and do the library reload based on that. So I'm just going to do CSS watch. Um, like this. Tasks. Oh, actually, you're not going to have any tasks to run when CSS gets changed, right? You're just going to run options, live reload, true. Does that make sense? Because when you compile files, you're going to compile out CSS. It's going to watch for the CSS changes. This but um, if you have any CSS that's getting changed without less being changed, obviously watching the CSS will still work. Whereas if you were just watching less, it wouldn't work. This, I'm, I'm hesitant to make this. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was just curious if, uh, if both dev and distrib would run on watch the way that's set up there. Yep, it would. Okay. Not the be not your best plan. So. <laughs> Uh, hold on one sec. It, it is. There we go. So yeah, you want to run it like that. So is there a way to set it up so you you would be using? I mean, if you took this this file, then go to the live. I guess you would never would be using run in a production. 
I, I sure to God hope not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Watch, so watching would never apply to the live environment because that's when you're supposed to type dev. Mm -hmm. But then the distribution thing, you would run that when you deploy. As like a, a deploy prehook, essentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th that's kind of what we do. We have uh, we use Python's Fabric to deploy, and so what Python deploy runs is it runs M uh, grunt dist. It makes sure that everything's working before it deploys. It'll do the compilation. It syncs out the static assets to S, whatever the Amazon service S2, S3, S3, and then it, it'll does its its thing. So yes, that's that's when you'd want to use dist. Cool. Okay. What I was gonna say about the CSS part, it used to be that. It would only do co uh, CSS injection if it was w changing based on a CSS file. They might have fixed it. They might have not. I don't remember. It's just a good idea just to watch the CSS, though. Okay, so we have this beauty over here in red. Um, Got to make sure our grunt watch is running. So let's clear that grunt watch. Change this to be like blue now. So it ran CSS dev, it then watch saw the change, and it then completed the live reload. I guess it did not live reload, injected. That's really interesting. Okay, let's. So there was no reload there, it just did it by itself. Pretty sweet. Okay, I believe I've gotten through everything that I have prepared for other than showing you my fantastic PHP app with unit testing and all sorts of best practices. Please hire me as your next PHP developer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got everything. Cool. Uh, I got like, I got like a couple minutes. I could just show you some more stuff to do with Grunt. Um, Happy to field any questions or about Reddit and how great it is. <laughs> questions, anything? So Reddit has an office here in town? Right? Yeah, we have an office here in Salt Lake. Um, uh, so Reddit as a company is only about 30 employees. Oh, really? Yeah, not too big. There's offices in San Francisco, one in Salt Lake, and one in New York. Um, we. Here in Salt Lake are the Reddit Gifts office. So if you'd heard like Reddit Secret Santa or Reddit's Marketplace or any of that, that's all here in Salt Lake. I'm the front end developer on those properties. Um, so you can't tell me that Reddit has a bad design and I should feel bad because I don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, fun place to work for sure. Uh, other questions? It's great stuff for Angular in it. It'll do like the special NG minification, which is kind of fun. Uh, we can go look at the one that I, I made for the Reddit Gifts app. Let's see. Let's see. Let's just do this. Look away while we're looking at Python files. I know they scare you. Grunt file, there we go. Okay, so here's some other stuff that you can do with it. Like we're running JS hint on all of our JavaScript stuff. This is just all the configuration values of the stuff that we're, we're checking and not checking. Um, here's some globals for Jazz. Uh, we run Jasmine for our unit testing. Um, just some globals to ignore. We also lint our grunt file itself. Uh, this is all the stuff to test. Here's something kind of cool. So like, for example, we, we run linting on all of our um, JavaScript, but I don't want to lint other people's stuff, right? So I, I just filter that out, and you can define filter files to, of stuff to filter out. Sass, this one's kind of fun. So here's a, here's a better example of like production and developer environments. Like in di distribution where there's no caching, no tracing, 
we want it compressed and no source maps, but in um, for developers, we want a cache, we want Unix new lines. I guess they both have that, so whatever. Okay, uh, we'll watch the grunt file, watch lib test, watch SAS files. This is a reload watch, so like every time I'm changing Django template files or HTML partials, um, you want to do a live reload on that. Uh, Jasmine, we're just watching the same stuff that JS Hint is watching, um, telling it where the specs and helpers are. Um, I don't think this is necessary, but it was, it's in there from something else. Uh, every time we're doing a distribution, um, we don't want to distribute or we don't want to sync out the map files that come from SAS because uh, I don't know if you've ever used Chrome Canary, you can actually live edit your SAS instead of just live editing your CSS. Um, those depend on having map files, so you need to create them, but you also don't want them out in production, right? So that's why we just we clean out the directory. It's like make clean, right? If you've any of you have done that kind of stuff. Flake 8 is the one I wrote. So I don't imagine any of you will ever use it because it is Python linting, but I wrote it, so I'm kind of proud of that. It, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, don't lint migrations. That, that was a bad idea. <laughs> have you ever, any of you ever seen Django migrations? They are just, it's like Python vomit. Uh, it, it's auto-generated Python that runs SQL commands for you. <coughs> um, we also re rerun pep8, which is uh, linting. Newer, this is actually one I, I could have shown you, um, pretty cool. What newer does is, so for example, we have a huge Python project. And we don't want to lint everything because a lot of our old code is really bad and it just like drowns out any sort of useful knowledge. So what we do is we run this, let's call the newer filter, and it will only run on files since its last successful run. So essentially what you do is you establish your baseline of like, this was my last successful run, meaning like I only want to lint from stuff that's newer from this from now on, right? So, so that's kind of what newer does. And just to see that syntax, it's right here. So this is my pre-commit hook. <coughs> It'll run flake 8 on only files that are newer since its last successful run. It makes sense. Any questions on that? Pretty cool. Um, another cool one. Actually, I'm not going to show you that particular piece because that has things in it that I shouldn't show. Might have to. Do no, just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can run arbitrary shell commands, which is pretty sweet. So if you have something that has not been yet created, like a grunt plugin for one, you should write it. But two, you can just run shell, right? Like it'll just give you a list of shells, and it'll return if it was successful or, or was not. Okay, let's and yeah, here's some other things like just a bunch of stuff loading. Registry some tasks, and oh, I didn't show you this one. So there's a special task called default. So you know how I was saying like grunt PHP or grunt less or something like that. The default task is what happens if you just type grunt, right? So that would be a good place to put your git hooks, right? If you want to make sure that everyone gets them, um, just put it in your default task. Cool. Um, no more questions? Obscenities? Any? No? <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. That's all I got.